Hi, I'm Mitchell Strapinchik with Chicago Media Action, Chicago Indie Media, WLUW and WHPK Radio. Outfoxed was a film that aired, um, was released actually, mostly by DVD, but also a little bit on the internet, in 2005, produced by the noted documentary filmmaker Robert Greenwald, uh, as a kind of critical examination of Fox News Channel and the insidious influence and effects it's had on the media, democratic processes, a lot of negative influences. The film itself um, obviously is kind of dated. Not only was it focusing on policies of the Bush administration and the 2004 Bush Kerry um, electoral campaign, but also the um, a lot has happened in the intervening six years plus since that film was released. So a lot of things have happened, um, a lot of good things, a lot of bad things. Um, I would probably on the whole um, assess that probably Fox News is probably in a more precarious state than it had been when the movie was released um, for a lot of reasons, probably to no small extent because of that movie having been released and having to help to raise um, increased critical awareness about Fox News Channel and all of the things it is and has done over the years. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that have happened since then. Um, well, as far as the overall media climate has gone, it's more or less, even though you can find big examples of um, big media purchases, like for example, um, uh, well, Fox, uh, uh, M M Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation buying out Dow Jones, which owns the Wall Street Journal. That actually was a buyout, even though there's some pretty serious fights over that. You also was a very prominent example just in the last year of uh, Comcast, the cable company, buying out NBC Universal. Um, giving it a pretty serious foothold in um, broadcast, uh, radio, television, uh, movies, and music. So that's obviously one thing uh, that has happened. But what you found, or at least what I've seemed to find, is that you find this, these, one, these big instances of a big purchase that has happening or could happen. But the overall landscape, I think, as far as media has gone, has been kind of neutral and actually has tended a little bit toward deconcentration uh, in recent years. So, and that is obviously, I think, a good thing because we found, as we found historically, that concentration of media worldwide has tended to lead to anti-democratic politics. And that's understandable. If you have basically one or a few number of voices um, controlling what a lot of people see, hear, and read, that will obviously tend toward um, far fewer perspectives being voiced out. And if those perspectives tend to um, be of an under-democratic nature, then obviously undemocratic results may follow. And we've seen that throughout history. Um, that is a trend we hope to reverse or to try to prevent um, in this country from happening. Um, and I'm a little bit hopeful that I think signs are toward that end in this country. What we have seen, as far as media properties go, two trends. One is that media policies have more or less been at a standstill. Um, to no small extent because of grassroots political activism that have actually worked outside of the dominant media apparatus, using, to no small extent, grassroots organizing and the Internet as a tool for outreach um, to help to um, raise awareness about this. That awareness has led to tangible expressions of public outrage, and that outrage has actually reversed policies, mostly in the courts, twice now, both in 2004, which um, saw a major rollback by the FCC of major media policies get reversed precisely traced back to public outrage and public organizing that have affected that. And also just last month, um, in July 2011, when a subsequent attempt at a rollback by the FCC in 2007, which actually saw a great, men, great munch of public ferment, outrage, protests, including protests and uh, a hearing here in Chicago, that ultimately then did lead to another court action which just last month ruled in favor of public interest, of the, of the public interest, rolling back these kinds of policies. So that's a good trend, and that's one good development I think that has happened um, since this Outfox movie was released. Another good trend I count is the, I think the overall media climate has opened up a little bit. You have avenues that are expressly commercial that have not only been founded, like some, for example, Current TV, the democratic policy venue that Al Gore started up. It has having a little bit of an impact. MSNBC, which is a more established outlet, has actually veered toward a little bit less um, 
horrible policies uh, or, or uh, output. And they've actually tried to, I think, establish themselves as a kind of more, if not liberal, maybe even left, broadly defined, um, avenue for political discussion, outreach, debate, um, reporting, and analysis. Um, the Democracy Now!, the very noted uh, daily radio and television news program hosted by Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez, um, has, seen, has seen a remarkable growth um, in terms of the number of radio and TV stations um, it has had and flourished on. Um, it airs in Chicago every day on Channel 19 on cable TV five days a week. Um, it airs on what hadn't at the time but now has since uh, four radio stations in the Chicago area, um, as well as can both cable satellite, uh, satellite TV networks, which is not inconsiderable. A lot of people will find these shows and find these things um, just by surfing. That's actually how I found um, a TV show uh, the week after I graduated from high school that actually um, served as my kind of political awakening and got me interested on these issues. So don't dismiss this kind of power of just getting it out there because you never know who might stumble upon it and whose lives may be changed for the better. You may also discover other avenues that have also opened up for all this stuff. Like, for example, um, even something as pedestrian as The Daily Show or The Colbert Report. That's not inconsiderable. Their audience now it, it matches or exceeds that of Fox News, and they have now not only tended to skew an audience that tends to be younger, but also imbued them with a kind of critical perspective of watching media that their forebears, um, people of my generation and older than me, um, tend to not carry and that can be considerable, especially as far as the long-term trajectory of media and also the short-term whims of advertisers who tend to look to younger audiences as more desirable since they have more money to spend to woo advertisers. And the fact that older people will tend to hang on to their money more and be seen by advertisers as less desirable as a result, that would mean that conventional broadcasters as well as stations that have kind of hitched the model and an audience that tends to skew old, like Fox News, uh, will mean that ultimately, even though it might not be for quite a while, their days may later, be on, uh, later on be numbered. We also see the emergence of um, new avenues, mostly using the Internet, uh, the blogosphere and social media networks, that hadn't even emerged or at, at their infancy, um, and have now become huge shaping forces as far as media and outreach, to the point where national political campaigns involve them and are crafted around them, where at the time Outfox was released, they didn't even exist, never mind were thought out, never mind having been instantiated in any kind of tangible form. Now they are on the scene and are huge, and can help to serve as a vehicle for that kind of outreach where ideas and information can have that potential not necessarily always instantiated, but that potential at least, for that kind of um, flowering of news, information, and debate that an informed democracy needs and so, um, so badly requires. Fox has also seen, just in the last couple of months, a scandal that ultimately could shape the country and perhaps our entire media to its very core. It's actually a new developments in a scandal that actually dates back all the way back to 2005 when news corporation media holdings in Britain were caught in hacking into voicemails of um, mostly of celebrities, politicians, and the royal family. But in recent months we now have learned that it's not just uh, bigwigs about this and it's probably far more systemic than that. We now know that it is um, uh, everyday people um, famous notable crime victims, um, and uh, not just voicemails, but we now he's seeing hints it could be emails about this. We know from one whistleblower, and there are hints elsewhere that suggest that Fox News may also be implicated in this, to the point where there's apparently, according to one whistleblower, a room in Fox News that has... Um, it serves as a kind of nerve center for gathering information that, frankly, has probably been gathered by illegal means. The fact that this happened to, uh, was caught for a newspaper in Britain, a newspaper that ran for 168 years before it was abruptly shut down permanently, um, speaks to the potential of this scandal as it may continue to um, uh, envelop and materialize. 
if that comes to our shores, and there are already, by my knowledge, four investigations that are going on to look into the ramifications of this, if that continues here, Fox may well be in the crosshairs of the future potential of this, um, how this scandal materializes and what may wound up happening. What may well happen um, is obviously beyond anyone's ability to predict. Probably the best person who might be in a position to predict is a gentleman named Michael Wolf, who um, is an editor at Adweek magazine, who also wrote a book, a biography of Rupert Murdoch, called uh, The Man Who Owns the News. He's been making the prediction that he thinks that Fox News and that all, maybe all of the news properties of News Corporation generally may have to be cut off because of their implications in this information hacking scandal. If that happens, then we may see Fox News and maybe News Corporation generally literally cut in half, split into separate companies, maybe even the entire news division may be dissolved outright in order to try to save and salvage the rest of the company, the sports holdings, the movie holdings, the television holdings, the stuff that wouldn't be involved with news, try to keep all of that secure and under a single corporate umbrella and toss off all of the new stuff, which, as we've seen here, has been clearly implicated in this tremendous scandal. That could be where, where we go from there. And it might not just be Fox. We may well see other similar scandals of this nature occur with other media holdings. The future is yet to be written on this count. But what we do know and what we have always known is that the involvement of people, everyday people, and actions large and small to affect uh, the policy and the media on this front, including making your own. That is where the future lies, as far as our best hopes as far um, for improving this whole sordid set of circumstances. And what I would encourage those watching and listening to do today and in the future.